Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join T2 and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. Welcome back to the T2 Hubcast with me, Martin Johnson. And me, Benice Cassidy. Part two yes. of uh, the podcast for mental health uh, week next week. Yeah. And it, we talked about anxiety in the first part of this podcast. Uh, and 26 minutes ran away with us, B, and we just got into the flow around what is anxiety? What's the evolution behind human anxiety? Why is it absolutely normal and part of our existence? How does it keep us alive? Mm-hmm. Um, how has it changed over hundreds of thousands of years from the big five to the big 5,000? Yeah. Uh, we did sort of try to explain that now people are exposed to situations on a much more regular basis. We live in larger communities. What comes with that is there's more information going into the brain every day and therefore the perceived threats and danger is greater than it ever was. Huge. So hopefully that just gives people a little bit of uh, reassurance and understanding that it's not you. It's not us going crazy or... No, it's the world. Or, it, it is. <laughs> we just live in a different world. And I'm, I, it, it'd be interesting to see 100,000 years from now, what does that look like? Yeah. Right? And what do humans look like and how? what do they have to navigate then? But we're in the here and now in 2023. So for Mental Health Week uh, next week, we wanted to move on to this podcast, which was, okay, so we live in the world we live in. Mm-hmm. That's all a given. We can't change that, nor should we. But what can we do about it? If we are experiencing anxiety, is there anything we control? Mm -hmm. Because remember, we said it was about control that we can possibly do to give ourselves some respite or to manage it. Yeah. To live a more happier life, a a, a less stressful life, if you like. Yes. Yeah. Because that's what we all want. So there are some techniques we talk about. Let's start with the big one that we always talk about when we talk about challenge and threat state. Mm -hmm. It's the ABC technique. Yes. So what's the ABC technique? So ABC, really simple um, tool that you can use. Um, so A stands for just um, it's to accept and, and acknowledge how you're feeling in that moment. I think that's really important when you are feeling stressed and anxious um, to just accept that it's okay for me to feel like this. There's a reason why I feel like this. My brain is actually, and I'm I'm designed as a human being to have stress. So it's really important to acknowledge and accept it. It's a natural human response um, to stress. Um, B stands for breathe. So it's really important that when we're in that moment, when anxiety just takes over and that kind of fear and that worry is just, that's all we can think about. The brain's flooded full of cortisol. It's really important just to take that moment to to stop and just take a moment to breathe. Breathe. And, and the ABC technique is really easy to understand because it breaks it down into a simple acronym, which means in the moment you can just stop and go ABC. Let's yeah. ABC this. A is acknowledge. Mm-hmm. Don't wish a worry away. No. What we tend to do, if you've ever been laid awake at night where you go and you're thinking, you're worrying about something and you think, right, stop worrying now, Benice, and go to sleep. And then 10 seconds later, you yeah. try your best to block it out of your mind. And 10 seconds later, it's back again, tenfold. Yes. And you think, why am I doing this? Stop doing this. Well, that's because you're not accepting or acknowledging what the worry is. You're mm-hmm. trying to push it away. Yeah. So, Psychology suggests that actually going, I am worrying about this. It's okay. I'm acknowledging this because I'm clearly feeling that this presents a danger to me or some type of risk or it carries a level of exposure. Oh, it's just bloody important to me. Yeah. Right? That's okay. So the A is acknowledge it and then you can move on and and the B is breathe, which says just slow your breathing down for 60 seconds or so. It will delay that cortisol release. So Mm -hmm. breath work is important and anybody who studies breath work or practices in breath work knows that your your physiology affects your psychology. So slowing the breathing down and the uh, and the amount of oxygen you're taking into the body at a, at a, 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 a place in time will have a direct correlation on cortisol release. Yes. You will just start to delay that cortisol release and reduce it, which means you can take a moment to get your bearings and to engage the logical part of your brain, and then you can move on to the C. Yeah. And the C is control so really important especially when we're thinking about anxiety which is that feeling of um 
that feeling of fear and worry about what might happen in the future, it's really important to take that moment to just simply focus. What is it in this moment? What are the things that I can control in this situation? Because again, it gives you the opportunity to start thinking about logic and the cortisol starts to um, slow down um, as well because we're solely focused on the small things that we can influence and can control in that moment. And, and ABC works because obviously, as we're explaining, acknowledging the, the, the trigger, acknowledging what's causing you the stress, the anxiety, then slowing your breathing down to be able to delay the re release of cortisol and engage the logical brain. And then the see what do I control in the here and now that I can possibly do mm -hmm. to solve this or to avoid this or to stop myself from worrying. And the controllables element of ABC is really important because it then thrusts you into a series of events where in order to focus on what you control, it means that you then have to make some decisions. Decisions will then lead to actions and actions mm. will lead to outcomes. And then all of a sudden we feel back in control. Yes. And that's the magic of it, really. It's about getting yourself back in control of the situation. And yeah. that's why ABC is a simple technique, but it can work for many people. Mm -hmm. If you're a worrier at, at night and you have anxiety in the evening, pad and pen next to the bed, touch light. If something's circulating around your head, and you're getting yourself all worked up about it because you've got to do that big presentation on Friday or you've not prepared for that meeting or whatever it might be, switch the light on, write three things you're going to do the next day down that you can do in your control, switch the light off. Once it's out your head and on the pad, you're not going to forget about it and it'll be remarkable how much more relaxed you feel and how quickly yeah. you go to sleep, you yeah. know? And so many um, psychiatrists and um, as well, they say about just the sheer importance of being able to write it down, because as you say, it does, it gives you the opportunity to um, get things off your chest, to let it out, especially as well, if people, they might be feeling anxious about something, but they don't feel as though they can maybe speak to someone about it. It's still the opportunity to externalize those feelings, but also as well, thinking about ABC, it's giving you the opportunity to actually acknowledge it this is how I'm feeling in the moment this is the problem this is what's happening and writing it down then because you're you're physically doing something it means that actually again your your heart rate's going to come down you're focused on that so you're almost kind of distracting away from the feeling and emotion and focusing on actually kind of more of the the logistical side of things as well so you can then move on to your c which is to control yeah abc really helps and at this point it's probably worth mentioning that we, we've talked a lot about survival being our number one in it function and that's what triggers cortisol when we're mm. when we are presented with what we perceive as a risk or a danger to us uh, either physically or reputationally or whatever it might be however Cortisol is still released and anxiety still is induced mm -hmm. when we are trying to achieve things and move to fulfillment. So generally, if you think about us as humans, we are either moving away from pain and danger or towards pleasure and reward, which yes. gives us purpose. Mm -hmm. So for many of us, our hobbies and our careers and the things we invest our time in are the things that give us fulfillment. However, that this, this still creates anxiety because... When something means a lot to you and it is going to be tough to achieve, mm -hmm. um, it's going to create the anxiety of, okay, I'm putting myself in the arena here for a job interview or I'm going to go and try and complete a marathon or yeah. I'm going to do something. The, the very next thought the brain is going to do is go, you're going to get excited, you're going to get a dopamine release, you're going to be absolutely up for it and you're going to be really motivated to go and achieve it. But the very next thing the brain does is go, what if you fail? Yeah. What if people are watching? How are you going to explain it if you can't complete the marathon? What if you get a load of sponsors in and you don't do it justice? What if? What if you fail the interview? What if you don't get the job? And 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 the brain's very clever at bringing you back down to earth. So what I would say is, even on the things that excite us and fulfil us and that drive us forward, mm -hmm. anxiety will quickly follow because mm -hmm. it it's important to you and it, there's a level of risk to achieving it. Mm -hmm. So embracing that. And harnessing it is the key. And ABC is a really good way of going, I know what's happening. Acknowledge that this interview is important to you. B, breathe. Mm. Just calm yourself down, right? Get your bearings. C, what do I control? Well, I've got four days to prepare. I know what I'm doing. Let's get my slide deck together. Let's go through all the questions that I might get. 
let's do a bit of a role play with a friend or a family member. These yeah. are the things I can do to prepare for the interview. Yes. Anxiety subsides. So ABC really helps whether you are genuinely moving away from what you perceive as a risk or a survival mechanism or whether you're trying to achieve something that's incredibly exciting and fulfilling. Yeah. But it's also daunting, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yes. So anxiety can be a friend at times. It can... It can motivate you and give and, and make you offer the significant contribution required to achieve something because yeah. it carries a level of risk. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not so sure without it, we'd ever be able to get to a point where we we push ourselves in that uncomfortable zone. Yeah, because you, you, you know? need that drive and you need that little bit of fear. But again, it's based on having that level of control. That's then what is able, gives you the ability to actually put your, push yourself in order to achieve something. Um, and you can apply that to so many different things, whether it's completing a really big um, kind of high profile project at work or whether or not for someone it might be losing a lot of weight. Um, if you look at, okay, I've got like 10 stone to lose then straight away fear jumps in oh my god that's impossible you're never going to be able to do it but if you focus on those small things that you can control and actually how you're going to do it then it's much more achievable um but I think it's also really important to um, acknowledge some of those thoughts that you do have that are sometimes a little bit self-sabotaging as well because we all do it we're all our own worst critique as well so anxiety is good in a sense and it brings you and um that level of kind of fear and that level of risk but sometimes we all do have also on top of that just some thoughts that are just completely wild and really really stupid and silly and not really true and sometimes it's those little things and something as simple as no, you can't do that. Run a marathon. No, there's no chance that you can do that. That's simply not possible. And for some people, they start to believe that. And then that becomes the truth for them. And then again, if there's this, they, they know that they're, they're running this marathon because they started to get sponsors in and they're telling themselves, I can't do it. I can't do it. Then you're never going to be able to do that. That anxiety is just going to build and build and build. And that cortisol is just going to go um, even higher as well. And the reality is that then when it comes to that day when you need to get your running shoes on and run that marathon, all you can think about is the fact that your brain's telling you that you can't do it. It's the ultimate threat state, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, overly focused on consequence and avoidance and not on achievement. Um, but anxiety can be our friend, like I mentioned earlier. You know, would you even knock that interview out the park if you wasn't anxious? If you already yeah. knew you had the job and there was no consequence, would you knock it out the park? Probably not. You know, would you give the presentation of your lifetime at a conference if there wasn't the risk of the audience not liking it? Yeah, it makes no, you try harder. Would you, you know, perform to the best of your abilities in a sport, elite sporting final in front of 80,000 people if there wasn't the risk of losing? Mm. You know, no, the, you wouldn't, right? So it can be our friend and hands it, but to your point, if it runs away with you and you become consumed on the consequence piece of the what ifs yeah it can be a very difficult place to be a negative sure. place to be as well so abc coming back to the technique is a really positive good way of just recognizing that you're anxious and that something's triggered recognizing acknowledging what it is that's making you anxious and whether it's because it's an opportunity that you care about mm -hmm. an exciting opportunity that you care about that carries consequence or whether it's genuinely a bit of a survival, hypothetical, worrying about something, whether it's your health, your family, your livelihood, whatever it might be, in either direction, just acknowledge it. Yeah. You are you are either moving away from pain and survival or you're moving towards pleasure and reward, but it, it carries risk and it's incredibly daunting. Mm. Both is fine. You've got to ABC the hell out of it. Yes. Because that's all you can do. Yes. Acknowledge, breathe. What do I control here? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people we work with from elite, elite athletes to leaders to team members practice the ABC technique. Yeah. Introducing the T2 Hub, our smart online learning platform arms organizational leaders, managers, and their employees with content, insights, and learning tools in real time. Access the T2 Hub content anywhere and everywhere. Read, watch, and listen. For an online learning platform that delivers practical and manageable tools and content, choose the T2 Hub, the online learning platform from the people, performance people. Okay, let's move on. What? 
other techniques can people use or what other things can people look at in terms of managing their anxiety? So something that I'm... I found really interesting recently. So I've been uh, at the moment, I'm geeking out on Dr. Uh, Daniel Amen. So he's a psychiatrist based in uh, America. Um, and he got into psychiatry due to a number of personal um, reasons and things that happened within and ar around his life. Um, but what I love about him is he's got this little obsession with the brain. Um, and for him, it's very much a case of if you think of, for example, let's say you fell over, um, Martin, and you hurt your leg. First thing that the doctors would do would put, put would scan it and actually see what's going on inside. But what the reality is when there's um, a, something happening within the brain that is causing anxiety, stress, depression, very often we don't actually look inside of the brain where that's coming from and actually assess and identify, well, what's happening? Is there something going on in, in, um, around it? Um, so he's done loads and loads of research and he's scanned thousands upon thousands of brains. Um, he's got a lot of theory um, from that. But one simple little technique that he has, in, he calls it kill the ants. So ants, um, so ants stands for automatic negative thoughts. So when we have those negative thoughts that come into our in, into our minds that build stress, that build um, anxiety, the cortisol is flooding, we feel threatened, we're scared. Some of those automatic thoughts, that is your chimp talking. That's based on emotion. It's based on feeling. And what we need to do is ABC it. So acknowledge it, but also as well then challenge it. So let's say that we um, have that thought that says we can't do something. Um, then we well, let be, let's put one on the table here, like what might feel extreme, but a lot of people will resonate with my wife in particular, yeah. right? What about when you're going on holiday with your family? Yes. You're really excited. You're going on holiday with your kids. It's going to be amazing. But the plane journey is scaring the life out of you. The mm -hmm. thought of getting on a plane with all your family this is what my wife does. And anything remotely happening to that plane means that we're all gone, yes. right? You've gone in a nanosecond. She can go from excitement to, oh, that we've got to get on the plane to the what if to catastrophe. Yeah. And that's an automatic negative thought. It's an ant. Yes. Because within nanoseconds, to your point, and, and, and like we've explored on this podcast today, your brain is very hardwired to go, brilliant, we're going on holiday, can't wait to get to Barbados, uh, yet the plane, the flight's going to be eight hours, oh yeah, we're getting on a plane, oh my God, we're all getting on a plane, what if the plane crashes, you're dead. We're all dead. Right, yeah. so now I know that sounds extreme, but, but that is the way the brain works, it's people. an automatic negative thought because it instantly goes to survival. Yes. And the consequence of what might happen. Yes. So in that scenario, that's an ant. That's an automatic yes. negative thought yeah. driven by what we've explored so far, which is our number one innate function is survival. Yeah, 100%. Um, and what Dr. Raymond talks about is um, this is where we need to engage the logical part of the, the brain. Um, and sometimes it's simply a case of just asking yourself questions to challenge that thought. So yes, let's say that um, you're going on holiday and there's five of us, we've all got to go on a plane, it's going to be eight hours long and oh my goodness, that plane's going to crash and we're all going to die. So we've got the ant there, so that automatic ne negative thought. Which then has then starts to trigger cortisol, which yes. is a very anxious feeling starts to arise around, I don't rip, do I want to go on this plane? Yeah. And now we're in an anxious state. Yes. So you've got to break that anxious state yes. by engaging your rational brain, reducing the cortisol and starting to answer the questions needed to actually rationalize the situation. Yes. And the very first question you might ask therefore, Benice, is statistically, how many planes crash in the UK every single year? Mm -hmm. And if you Googled that, the statistic is so rare. It is. It's you're, you're more likely to crash in the car on the way to the airport, which yeah. then triggers the second wave of anxiety. So let's not go there. Yes. But the point being is you can rationalize by asking one simple question. How many planes have crashed with families on board in yeah. the last 10 years? Yeah. And then also as well, um, another one that um, Dr. Raymond talks about is um, the first question that he always has when, when there's an ant um, is, well, is that true? So we're going on holiday, um, we're going to get on a plane for eight hours and that plane's going to crash um, and we're all going to die. Well, is that true? 
Well, no, because again, as you just said, when you look at the facts and you look at the statistics, it isn't. But again, when you're in that state, when the cortisol is in the brain and you're feeling really stressed, you're feeling really anxious, your natural response will be, well, yes, it is true. Well, the second question might be, could it be true? Perfect. Now, the answer to the second question is yes. So your third question is, is what are the chances of it being true? Mm -hmm. Because... All of a sudden now you've gone, no, it's not true because planes generally don't crash. Second answer, could it be true? Yes. Okay. Now it spikes my anxiety again. Third question, what's the chances of that happening? It would only take a couple of Google searches and some statistics off the internet yeah. and the airline industry to realize that it's a 1.5 billion chance or whatever it yeah. is of that happening. Yeah. And, and I think to your point, Asking the right questions to yourself yeah. will help you rationalize an irrational fear. Yeah. And another one as well is acknowledging how you feel with that thought. So how do you feel with that thought? And um, who would you be without it as well? So with that kind of stress and that fear that you've got for going on the plane. So actually kind of what is the impact of that? So at the moment, it's causing a lot of stress in the family because everyone's looking at you and thinking, oh my goodness, just calm you're down. You're spoiling my holiday. Yeah. I'm trying to get excited for it. And all you're doing is like creating this anxiety around it and the kids are picking up on it. And, you know, yes. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And who would I be without that thought? And what would our situation be without that thought? So our, our, the reality without that thought, we would all be mad, all, all getting along and, there's kind of less stress there it's still going to be there but we're all getting along and we're all just focused on it's just a plane ride it's eight hours and then we've got two weeks in the glorious sunshine so actually looking at the, the reality of it and again looking that initial kind of looking at that ant so that automatic negative thought who would I be without that and what is the opposite to that thought and, and the answer to that would be well if I didn't have if I didn't worry about going on holiday with my children and, and my entire family and worry for their safety, would I even be a good mother? Probably not. If you didn't have that survival protective instinct, then no, I probably wouldn't be picking up on other things that are a danger to my children, which may be a bit more of a reality. Yeah. So actually, you can you can start to rationalize it by saying, I'm, I'm not going mad. This is normal because I'm a mother who's protective of her children or a father who's protective of his children. So my fear of getting on a plane with them mm -hmm. in my mind right now is, is it's a byproduct of me being a mother, a loving, caring course, mother. Yeah. So all I have to do is ask myself the right questions, analyze the situation, yeah. rationalize it, and know that statistically it is I've got more chance of winning the lottery than crashing on a plane. Yeah. And that is true, by the way. I've looked it up. You have more chance of winning the lottery. Wow. Do you know when you look at it statistically, the yes. amount of air travel, the amount of passengers who fly yeah. every year versus the amount of actual plane crashes that have been over the last 10, 20 years, yeah. you've got more chance of winning the lottery. So when you say that and you go, okay, let's get on the plane. Yeah. You know, and and this is just one example. There can be examples where they're a little bit more likely to happen to examples that are extreme, et cetera. But what you're saying is understand the the ant analogy is that we get automatic negative thoughts because we are programmed to do so yes. based on everything we've said around survival, purpose, all of that wonderful stuff. And it's about rationalizing those thoughts by asking yourself the right questions. Yes. Yeah. Asking yourself the right questions. Um, and it's almost kind of distracting away from the emotion in that moment so that we can, we're going back to ABC, so that we can ABC it, so that we can, again, focus on just breathing and then control. So if this is a situation that we have an influence over or it's a situation we're going to be in, what can we control? What can I control to make sure that this trip to the airport, the, the experience whilst we're at the airport and my experience on this plane, what can I control to ensure that it's going to be as calm as it's possibly going to be? But also as well, thinking ahead and thinking, right, okay, so let's say everything goes fine. I'm, I'm able to ABC everything and I'm feeling calm. The, the anxiety is still there. But let's say there's a bit of turbulence on the plane. What can I do forward planning? What can I do ahead of that moment or potential moment 
to almost think about, well, when turbulence happens, I'm going to put some music on, I'm going to grab my husband's hand and I'm just going to distract myself so that you can almost plan and prepare for it. It might not happen, but at least then if it does happen... It doesn't catch you off guard. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely right. And I think, um, you know, I think just two simple techniques, the link together, ABC and automatic negative thoughts, you know, understand that it is that and try to rationalize by asking yourself questions and in abc it's rationalized by taking back control yes which you're still asking yourself questions because you're saying what do i control in the here and now that i can possibly do about this right so that's really what we can do now that's not going to say to everybody listening to this that the minute you get anxious this is going to work instantly Mm -mm. it's not right you're gonna have to practice it you're gonna have to play around with it yeah um but it's certainly better doing this than just sat sat there watching your anxiety build yeah. and feeling more and more and more out of control. Yeah. And I think that's what what tends to happen with the anxiety response, isn't it? Yeah. So A, B, C, and ant. Yeah. Kill the ants. Kill the ants. Kill those automatic negative thoughts because they're not positive and they're not productive. I, I always talk, B, about your internal narrative matters on mm. the line of questioning. And I say to people, if you whatever you ask the brain, the brain will answer it. Mm-hmm. I always say that. Like, separate yourself from your brain and treat it as a relationship. Right? I always say this, yeah. right? You know, like we say about your chimp, you know, yeah. get to know your chimp yeah. and treat it like a relationship. Give it a name. I say, get to, you know, treat your brain like a relationship. Right. Ask it questions and whatever questions you ask it, generally it will answer. Yeah. Not out loud and not in a weird way, but generally it will it will respond and you will then respond in a way. So, for example, if you're always asking yourself, why does nothing ever go right for me? Mm. Why the world's against me? I've got no chance of doing this because of X. Yeah. You know, why do I never get the promotion? Mm -hmm. right all of that then your brain will answer that question yeah it'll find evidence to back it up well you know good yeah well because 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 you you haven't got no skills because uh the because organizations favor other people because the world's not fair you know you will get answers and that will then fuel a self-perpetuating cycle of Mm. victim mentality yeah it's the same as that person that comes into the office and they sit down and they go oh today's just going to be a real shit day well it is yeah or when someone says my kids say this all the time i can't do that and i go yeah you're right and they look at me as in thanks dad Mm -hmm. and what i say to them i say if if you are convinced you can't do that you will be right Mm mm-hmm that, I'm that, telling, that I'm, will be your reality because your unconscious mind is going to find ways and find evidence to back up that thought. But if you said, with practice and time, I reckon I could do that, you'll be right. Yeah. And, and you know, your internal narrative counts. And that's why asking yourself the right positional questions. So rather than saying, why do I never get the promotion? Because mm-hmm. you've been for two interviews and you've been bypassed twice. Mm-hmm. Right. You've been beaten in the process twice. Rather than say that, question good uh, positive narrative might be, right, what can I do differently next time to make sure that I put myself in the best possible position, position to get the promotion? Yeah. Now your brain will answer you. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you need to rehearse the questions a bit more. Maybe you need to do a bit more stakeholder management with the leaders running up to the interview process. Maybe you need to start showing the right behaviors. Maybe you need to go on a course, yeah. right? Yeah. All of a sudden now we're solutions focused. Yes. And that's the difference to your point around asking questions to kill the ants. It needs to be a positive narrative about what you can do yeah. and not the negative narrative around why this is happening, what it means to me and why it's unfair. Mm. B, it's 28 minutes again. Boom, we've done an hour. Time flies. We've, for Mental <laughs> Health Week 2023, the theme is anxiety. We've done an hour on the evolution of anxiety, what it is, why it serves a purpose not to be afraid of it, to embrace it, to get to know why we yeah, get anxious. It's normal to feel that way. And we've looked at a couple of coping mechanisms, ABC and ANT, around how we can, what can we do when we're experiencing anxiety to try and cope with it more, mm-hmm. rationalise it and get through it yes. and come out the other side. Yeah. So hopefully that's been of interest for our listeners for Mental Health Week 2023. B, loved that. Me too. We probably could do another three hours on it. Yeah, we? I think we could. <laughs> well, maybe we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll see what the response is to this and we'll, um, yes. we'll maybe come back for the future. But B, thank you very much. Thank you.